You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. Ba 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 ba. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Command Zone Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Weeks. I'm Jimmy Wong. It's halftime here at the Command Zone. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back to the show, everybody. I'm Josh Lee Quiet. How's it halftime? <laughs> <laughs> What are we doing today, Rachel? We're doing something one. vaguely sports related. Yeah. Uh, we got a lot of great feedback on the We Draft Equipment episode that we did. It was 562. We draft the best equipment. And we were like, you know what? Let's do it again. We Run it back. Run, Run it, it back. back. Yeah. Don't change the like formula. <laughs> uh, so today we are bringing back the fantasy draft of magic cards. If you missed the last draft, uh, it's not a magic draft. We're going to be fantasy <laughs> drafting magic cards in a certain category. And this time we let our patrons vote on what we were going to draft. And, and our they patron- picked the hardest one. It was they so did. hard. I was last night up at like midnight just being like, uh, should this be number three or number four? <laughs> I was changing oh, mine like while I, we were sitting there. There's arrows all over I'm my I'm not thing. at all confident nice. in mine at all. Nice. We are drafting utility lands. Wow. Before we get into it, if you want to pick up any of the sweet lands we are going to talk about in this episode, go to cardkingdom.com slash command. Card Kingdom has a huge selection of magic cards in every printing, in every condition. We're picky about the kind of cards that go in our deck, and I love shopping at a place that has a huge selection of cards so I can get exactly the card I'm looking for at exactly the price. Yeah. Plus, when you buy them all in one place, that means they come in one safe package, packaged professionally, so that I know the cards that I ordered are going to be the ones that show up in the condition that I ordered them in. Again, we trust Card Kingdom with our collections here, and you can do so while supporting the show at cardkingdom.com slash command. And when you get those cards, keep them protected. Keep those lands protected. That's like the first thing I sleeve when it gets to my deck. because uh, The most important cards in all Because important cards in every, Even though yeah. Jimmy doesn't put it in any of deck. Yeah, no, I tried yeah. playing. Yeah, yeah, I tried, and it didn't work, so I just took them all out. <laughs> so make sure you go to ultrapro.com slash command. Ultra Pro is the game accessories brand that we all trust our collections to here at the Command Zone, including every single time you see a deck on game nights, you see a dice getting rolled. That is Ultra Pro, including the play mats. When it comes to collecting and protecting your collection, Ultra Pro has got your back. These were really exclusive play mats that were released yeah. with these secret layers a long, long time ago. We the only place you could have gotten them is on Ultra Pro. So the next time a secret layer comes out, they will have those play mats on sale usually. You can check it out yourself. You can sign up for the newsletter, ultrapro.com slash command. Tons of great deals all the time going on. You don't want to miss out. Collecting and protecting. I like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 did it. Nice. You, got, you might have a future in the world of show business, Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and the final way to support all of our content is directly if you go to patreon.com slash command zone. We have an awesome community. We uh, have a Discord server with quite a few members. We're always answering questions on there, having conversations. We also give access to game nights and extra turns earlier than the general public. It's ad-free as well. And we have exclusive content. Turn talk after every episode of extra turns where all the players get around and talk about the game afterwards. So if you want access to all that stuff, again, patreon.com slash command zone. And deck list for game nights, right? Oh, yes. We've recently started started taking deck submissions from our patrons that we might highlight on our show. Uh, we're Actually, we're planning on very soon shooting the first gameplay episode that is all Patreon-submitted decks. So that's very exciting. Yeah, Pretty call. cool. Super cool. And you can vote on the next draft. Yep. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so many perks. Plus, <laughs> we shout out one lucky patron every single podcast episode. And this one is dedicated, dedicated to, to Cooper Bennett. Bennett. Cooper? You rock. You rock. Got it. All right, let's get into this utility draft, utility lands draft. How's it going to work, Rachel? Yes. So we've all prepared a list of draft pick utility lands. Our lists are different. Our strategies are different. But the goal is to come up with five lands that really like are powerful and uh, have a, just have a strong stable of five utility lands at our disp- disposal. Yeah, so I, I think for the last one we said, yeah. we were drafting this as if these would be the only. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cards in this category that we would ever have for the rest of our commander careers. So high stakes. The stakes are very high. (laughs) This is hypothetical. I'm still going to play with the lands they draft on episodes of Game Nights and Extra Turn. Yeah, I'd rather take 15 (laughs) lands and five. Yeah. Yeah. But But for the purposes of this draft, that is how we are picking the the cards. That's the condition here. And we're going to be serpentine drafting, which means whoever picks first will also will pick last in the next one. So it'll go first pick, second pick, third pick, then third pick will pick again 
second first and we'll go back and forth so it's as fair as possible oh this used to be called naga drafting now it's just called snake drafting yeah <laughs> so <laughs> serpents have yet to be errata yeah. <laughs> uh serpents persist uh before we start i wanted to define utility lands mm. a little bit uh clearer because utility is feels a little vague right. even with us we were like does this count does this count yeah, 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 yeah we were we did a little bit of back and forth so the line is a little fuzzy but we decided is it's a land that has some sort of utility outside of producing mana. So no Five. Gaia's Cradle, no Nykthos, no Cabal Coffers. It has to have an ability that is not producing mana. Yeah, yeah. some kind of alter ulterior motive. <laughs> yeah. Or it also, the, there's two things. It, it, mm. If it only fetches for another land, that also was disqualified. Right. Yeah. And for this, we're just, we all have perfect mana all the time. It's yeah. uh, so nothing that is like specifically fixing or specifically mana production. It'd also be very boring if it's like, all right, go. I take bad land. Blooded strand. <laughs> okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. What? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Like so in the interest of keeping this interesting, we are not going to be talking about fetch lands or anything that just produces mana. Or fixes. Yeah. Or fixes. fetches. Yeah. All that stuff. Okay. I'm looking and at it and I just realized I'm not going first this time. Dang nope. It. To determine <laughs> the, to, to determine the, the draft pick order, I went to a very real website called Random dot org and i put our three names into it and it randomly selected jimmy to go first nice josh will be picking second and i will be picking third <sighs> for this first round one. i did that last time yeah, that it's felt really good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> two in a row, after knowing what two people have picked too yeah, yeah. yeah. i remember oh, that felt very good uh, okay well, jimmy, i'm actually i love my spot because i'm not clear on what i should go yeah pick number one yeah yeah and and right now my brain's going like should i pick this number one i think i still will yeah uh, it is one of my favorite colors. Oh, you're picking a colored land first. I am. Already because surprising. Because this land, I think, is just absolutely one of the most flexible, useful lands of all time. Mm -hmm. Any deck that has this color, this is an auto-include. Yeah. My first pick in the utility lands draft what it is. is Boseju, who endures. Yeah. 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 This yeah. is a legendary land. You can play it and tap it for green, but it also has a channel ability for one in green. You can discard it, destroy it, target Let's just, how many can we conclude here, everyone? <laughs> Artifact, enchantment, or non-basic land and opponent controls. That player may search their library for a land card with a basic land type, put it on the battlefield, then shuffle, and it costs one less to activate for each legendary creature you control. So very yeah. typically, this is just green, uncounterable, destroy an yeah. artifact, enchantment, or non-basic land. Yeah, I mean, it's a very powerful land. Picking a green land first is you bet wild. You. There's so many colorless lands that are on this list so it was really hard for me to weigh the colored versus the yeah. colorless yeah artifacts are a lot easier yeah mm -hmm. equipment was way easier yeah. where we didn't pick a colored uh, uh, uh for a while equipment yeah it, yeah it was like six I seven think reality was, chip was yeah. the first one yeah, yeah. so if, to have you do it first i mean i'm kind of glad you did you broke the seal so i won't feel so bad because yeah. i was like, is also saying if i'm going first there's no way I'm going to get this card by That's the time true. it's back. That's true. No, no, no. It's still there at six. In fact, what number did you have Boseju at, Rachel? I had Boseju third. I had it fourth. Yeah. I like Boseju is really great. I, I, there's a lot of redundant pieces in that category. Obviously not on a land, but I didn't want to prioritize it if it w didn't feel like... Um, yeah, your deck... Like I really needed it. Yeah. Your deck can find the effect of destroying those things on other cards. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But it, it's obviously a very powerful card. I just love that you don't... I remember back in the day, Cross and Grip was like the go-to because yeah. mm -hmm. it was uncountable split second. But Seiju feels like Cross and Grip to me. Yeah, and, it only costs one mana. Mana. <laughs> and it could be on the land instead. Right? Cross and Grip to cost too much mana. Also, now. I love that you have so many lands to spare that you're pitching them for spells. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Hold on. Let's go back. Uh, you're kidding. You're kidding. You're no, 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 no. You're no, no, no. You're no, no, no. You're never channeling it. It looks like yeah. a forest to what me. What are you doing, Jimmy? <laughs> like, I had to get rid of this. Then he's like, ah, oh, I missed my land drop. I missed but my land drop. You just tried I had to destroy that. It, does, it doesn't look like a land to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. That is a great first pick. Takes uh, uh, some high picks off of the board. Josh, what do you have as number one? I'm waffling between my one and two now. Uh-oh. Because he didn't pick either of them. I was really hoping you pick one of my top two so yeah. I wouldn't have to figure nope. out which one <laughs> is number. Oh my God. Putting these in order is so, so hard. So tough. So tough. I can't believe I did a colored one first, too. I that, mean, that is, yeah. There's no land that feels quite as just like. Yeah, it's powerful. I'm really jealous of Rachel because. Oh, I, I'm, I'm the loving this seat. Yeah. I'm yeah. loving this yeah. seat. Okay. Uh, oh, uh. <laughs> okay. I am going to go at my. Josh Lee Kwai with the number two pick in the 2023 <laughs> Best Utility Lands draft selects from the great set of 
the heck? Modern Horizons yeah. 2. Yeah. Urza's Saga. Colorless. Yeah, had to go. The first ever Saga land Josh has selected and is coming up to the stage now after just calling their parents, uh, <laughs> Urza and Mishra. <laughs> so on three stages, this first adds a colorless or you can tap it for two in the second stage to make a construct. And the third stage, you can do that. But you also sack it and find an artifact with mana cost zero or one. Yep. And it gets on the battlefield for free. Yep. So literally every deck can run it to find the soul ring. Often there's skull clamps and other yep. things you can find. Skull clamp, shadow spear, um, mana the, crypt, the, the, ozolith. the ozolith. I've run yep. it to find. Yeah. Yeah. So there are usually multiple hits per deck that are among the most powerful, if not the most powerful cards in mm. your deck. Uh, you do lose the land, but it tends to be worth it, especially if you get soul ring because it did. Yeah, then it, it did ramp the you. The construct is often very useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is just. A very powerful. This is in the category of some decks I purposely do not play it because it's too powerful. Wow. So it's, you know, on that Mana Crypt line, I like to call it, where like, I have Mana Crypts. And it finds Mana Crypt. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I have Mana Crypts that are sitting on the sidelines that are in no decks because I don't want to push my, you know, power seven level power level decks yeah. up to eights or nines. Mm. Yeah. So that's how powerful I think Urza Saga is. So that's why I right. chose it at number two. Pretty good. Yeah. I had, I had Urza Saga as my first pick. I was like, I don't think there's a chance that I get to three. But um, but it was close. It was but close. It, but it was close. <laughs> <laughs> what did you? What, what number did you have it at, Jimmy? It's basically two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a uh, man. These lanes are so tricky because there's so many that you just feel like. Well, obviously, I'm taking that. Like, I have to take that one. Yeah, but I need I'll, that. I'll, 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 I but need then that I don't one. get this one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm really curious to see what you pick at yeah. three and four because I think my number two has got to be one of them. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll see. Otherwise, it was going to be Urza Saga. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was really hoping that I would sort of steal an Urza Saga here. But, um. <sighs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. You know what? I'm sticking to my guns. I was really, uh, I, I really wanted lands that just felt unique and felt really, um, really powerful in the slot that they occupy. Okay. And uh, for that reason, I think I am going to choose at number three, Maze of Ith. Wow. wow. I'm taking it. And it's a, a little bit high, but I it's get to so pick good. two. So. It's so good. I I'm surprised you have it that high. I uh, you know it's the kind of land that you just there's no other land that does this, right? There's not even yeah. that many effects that do this. There's there certainly no other colorless effects that do this. Yeah, I think there's one it, but it costs 4 man to do or, it. Or yeah, the, the saddle bags yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's it's like a core haven yeah. that's got a similar effect not the yeah. exact same. And there is a right. there is one land that is colorless but it's 4 mana. Yeah. So it's a lot. Right. That's the Maze of it just does it for free. Yeah, it's in the decks that want a Maze of Ith, this is going to be the best land in the deck. Like, yeah. if, if you're running it as a protection piece, if you're running it as a combo piece, which it often can be, yep. yeah, um, yeah. I think Maze of Ith is going to be one of those draws that you just start to feel safe behind. And that is not um, not something that you get out of a land super easy. Yeah, yeah it's a controlly kind of card. That's why I didn't have you pegged for having it super high on your list. So I'm surprised by it. I mean, I love Maze yeah. of Ith, and it's one of those cards I think that plays a lot better than it reads. If you've never had a Maze of Ith in play, mm. put it in your deck and just try and get it in play once so that you really understand how it works because Maze of Ith often stops all attacks against you, which doesn't make <laughs> yeah. sense, but it does because player A goes, well, I'm not going to attack them. They have a Maze of Ith, so yeah. they attack somebody else. Player B goes, well, I'm not, well, not going to attack, attack them. them. They have a Maze of Ith. They attack somebody else. Player C goes, well, I'm not going to attack them. They have a Maze of Ith. And what did it do? Because just never tap it down. Yeah, because yeah. these <laughs> players, like, somebody make them use it, and but not me, somebody yeah. else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sometimes it'll come back to your turn and Maze of it hasn't been tapped, but in effect, it's been tapped three times. Right. And it hurt your opponents while doing so. Yeah. <laughs> it's also the kind of land that demands an answer, which is pretty sweet. Um, yeah, especially since a lot of people don't play answers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Was well, the uh, answer going to be your next pick? <laughs> so the interesting thing is, no. Oh, wow. wow. What? My yes. next pick... <laughs> Well, it's because there's a lot of replacements. Yeah, it's gonna, yeah, there's replacement there's packs. so much redundancy in that slot, and I'm usually perfectly happy to run the subpar ones. Yeah, me too. Uh, so I'm going to use a high pick here. This is no, pick on, number four? Pick number four. Pick number four. Bajooka Bug, Bajooka baby. Bajooka Bug. Bajooka Bug. Bajooka Bug. Bajooka Bug. Bajooka Bug. Bajooka Bug. Bug, Bug. This is the, uh, it's an auto include in, in black decks, and yep. I think it's significantly better than the next 
piece, the next land in this, oh, yeah. which is Scavenger Grounds, or it may yeah. be the new cave from Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Those don't hold a candle to Bajukabog. Uh, but yeah, Bajukabog yeah, yeah, yeah. is free, incidental graveyard interaction on a colored land. Does this um, mean I don't need to pick Bajukabog esque effects now? Because uh, you picked it? I, yeah, I got it. Don't worry. I got <laughs> yeah, the okay, Bajukabog. Okay. We got table. our graveyard hate covered by yeah. covered. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> I, it, that's how it feels, though. Yeah. Like, you're like, you're playing black, so this is your issue, yeah, right? That's like, your yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can you, yeah, yeah, go find go find your crop rotation uh which is is sort of what i like the way i was thinking about these is if i had a crop rotation and i had any land in my deck what am i going to get a lot of the time um so i a lot of my lands ended up being pretty toolboxy pretty yeah that's smart yeah Yeah. jimmy what number did you have with jukabar got it was so one two five i had it at number three yeah. yeah, which but, means I'm but gonna I get my number you're gonna two. Get number two. I'm gonna get my one and two. Yeah. I would say my three and th- three through five are all interchangeable, though. So yeah. it could have been as early as three. There's a lot of flexibility because they're all literally colored lands that have a specific effect. All right, it is back to you, sir. So I've picked number uh, five, five here. We are yep. in round two. Pick number five. Yeah, this is, is amazing. I'm getting my. I know. I was I was heating and hawing because I was figuring that I wasn't gonna, gonna get, get, get my it. number two, and yeah. one and two were very close for me. So I am going with Strip Mine. Oh, yeah. yeah. Number two. Which, if I looked, there's a, a couple of ways. I like your thought, Rachel, on like, oh, if I had a, a, a tutor for a land, you know, what do I want to give myself options to? I sort of looked at it as like, well, what am I playing the most in most of my decks? Yeah. And mm-hmm. Urza's Saga is not actually the land I have in the most of my decks, but it's in the most in my most powerful decks. Right. This next land is the land I have the most. In fact, I play this in almost every single one of my 25 decks. Wow. Yeah, which, by the way, I have a lot of these because of Chronicles, and I was around yeah, back yeah, in those yeah. days, and the white-bordered uh, strip mine. Oof. Yep. Don't shame me for it, but it, it does work. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, it does the exact same thing as a blackboard strip oh, mine? Oh, did I even yeah. say... Yeah, did I say strip mine yet? Strip mine? Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Yeah. It was clear. Yeah. It but, was clear, yeah. yeah. It's... Uh, I mean, th- that's the thing, is this is the best of these effects. Yeah. And it, it strip mine is so powerful that it is in addition to interaction a win con? Yeah. It can be it's if you've there. got a little crucible of world action yeah. or something going on. It also just we don't run a uh, targeted land destruction, mm. land destruction of any kind. So if that maze of it wants to be answered, there aren't very many cards that socially are not frowned upon to play yeah. that will solve yeah. that problem for you. Mm. Uh, you know, somebody plays a glacial chasm or something like that. Just oh, having yeah. an answer in your deck to very hard to answer cards. Strip mine is the best answer to that. That's yeah. why, yeah. That's yep. why I really like oh, it. Oh, man. Absolutely. Good card. All right, the final pick in round two. It is back to you, Jimmy. So, yeah, I have literally strip mine and then like Wasteland goes court in a row because I'm like, they all kind of do the same thing. Yeah. But now that strip mine's gone, I guess I should You need go. to take Wasteland at six? I don't think. No, I don't think so. Now, yeah. I don't think I'm going to take any effects like that unless I really you need it. You could get yeah. some of those at 11. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or you could pick them up on the waiver wire yeah, after the draft yeah. is over. That's the thing. <laughs> it's like the one. Ghost is not going anywhere. <laughs> it's a ghost. The one I play the most is Demolition field or ghost quarter yeah yeah, yeah. Like, free later. yeah it's coming in the top five. <laughs> don't worry about it that's sitting on tables at the draft pool like <laughs> um okay i'm gonna pick one that i don't even think is on everyone else's list what? here but it is in a lot of my decks and you're picking this high yeah okay i think it's really good and it's it's a card that is colorless you can put in any deck it's command beacon oh this is wild i saw this on your list and was like you know what Okay, yeah, and if if you have commanders that are super super important to your strategy, which especially is most my decks. high threat level ones like Naheb, uh, it's really important. Yeah, you can tap it, sack it, put your commander from your hand uh, into your hand from the command zone. So it just bypasses commander attacks entirely. And I see everyone writing it on their papers, which means it wasn't even nope. on their list. You could have taken this as your last. Oh pick yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, okay. Nope. it's okay. It's okay. I'm doing it. I'm sticking to my guns. I can't wait for the comments to tell me I was right. It's gonna be a great day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I like when it. When they have a breakout rookie season, you yeah. can be like, yeah. ha ha, command begin. <laughs> yeah. You were out there removing land. <laughs> <laughs> I'm recasting my commander. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I have been flagged the threat. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a flex. Um, yeah, so Command Begin is my number two pick at six. Yep. Uh, I don't care so much about the strategy. At this point, I'm just sticking by my laurels. You just, All right. So you went with because of just how much you play it. How much I play it, similar to how much you play Strip Mine. Um, I find most decks, 
if you're especially in games where like i just usually i play the heb i play uh-huh. commanders that just die yeah and being able to cast them for free or not for free without the commander tax is a big deal for me mm. hmm. well just you, pay, I you do pay one i ha- i have to be honest yeah. i don't think i have a command beacon in Whoa. a single deck i don't yeah Whoa. i have 25 decks i don't yeah i would just play a card that gives me more mana yeah, I... because then I'll just recast my commander with the mana. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Uh, I tend to. It doesn't fit my style. I tend to play commanders that are a little more under the radar. Uh-huh. Yeah, I have a couple of decks that are like kill me right now. Yeah, but yeah. Um, they're not the kind of decks that can really support a command beacon like a, a colorless land that well. So I tend to just play a little bit more under the radar than command beacon usually. Yeah, Josh plays like hidden commanders sometimes as well, so it's yeah. not as, yeah. That's true. I tend not to... So it's just not... It doesn't fit my style as well. Yeah, during my brewing, I do tend to worry like, well, okay, I got to have plans if my commander gets removed, and that maybe makes me a little less scared if it gets removed, because I'm just like... run yeah. counterspell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> That'll stop anything trying to kill it. Except for Moseju. Yeah, oh, except wait, for no, Moseju. it's non creature It doesn't hit creatures. Unless it's yeah. uh, Shortakai. <laughs> oh, yeah. Moseju gets rid of that. Oh, don't talk about that. That's yeah. happened a lot. <laughs> oh, I believe it. It takes care of half your commander decks. Yeah. yeah right? but my decks are literally Literally Miram, you know, yeah. and all the commanders that are removed on site. So I just like having command beacons around. Yeah, that makes sense. Jimmy is going to take another pick. We're going to begin yes. round three in just a couple of minutes after a few words from our sponsors. Yeah, yeah, it's me, Cranko. You magic players are always going, Oh, Cranko, make me a bunch of goblins. Well, that's easy for you to say, but guess what? Those goblin tokens don't come out of nowhere. I used to spend hours looking through job websites to hire new gobbles, but not no more. Now I've got Indeed, where you can attract, interview, and hire in the same place. Their powerful tools let me find new recruits faster than your opponents can say, okay, I scoop. Indeed's hiring platform does the hard work for you. Matching you with quality candidates instantaneously. That means quick, numbskulls. Plus, with Indeed, I ain't gotta pay for resumes unless they're up to snuff. And I got high requirements, like uh, being a goblin. So go ahead and tap me again, you goon. I got employees for days, thanks to Indeed. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash Command Zone. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash Command Zone. Just go to Indeed.com slash Command Zone and support the show by saying you heard about it on this podcast. Indeed.com slash Command Zone. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Greetings, furballs. I am Nazan, revered bladesmith. As a cat, I care deeply about my grooming, especially trimming my body hair. Now I'm used to making blades that cut through skin, so when I tried making my own razor, it did not go well. Then I turned to Manscaped, the only brand I trust for putting blades near my sensitive pod. They sent me the Performance Package 5.0, and my fur has never looked finer. Their new body hair trimmer features two interchangeable next-gen skin-safe blade heads. Plus, it has dual LED spotlights, three length-setting combs, and it's even waterproof. Though being a cat, I'm not going anywhere near water. Yes. This package also comes with the Weed Whacker 2.0 for those pesky ear and nose whiskers. With proper grooming from Manscaped, you too can be the cat's meow. And I should know, I'm the cat meow. Get 20% off plus free shipping with code command at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with code command at manscaped.com. I can promise you've never seen a trimmer that looked like a spaceship, so get yours today from the folks at Manscaped. Okay, focus. We just gotta find the right line. Okay, yeah, so if I play Scorpion Strike, then you can boost with Vengeance of Stone. Or I could play Incredible strength and I could save vengeance to discard later. Yes. This is not magic. What are you guys playing? (laughs) This is Kinfire Delve Vainglory's Grotto. It's a tactical card game where you play as adventurers descending into a dangerous lair. You use your unique skill cards to conquer challenges and reach the final boss. Yeah, it's super easy to learn, but you have to play smart to win. You gotta think about sequencing, resource management, threat assessment. It really uses a lot of your skills for magic. Yeah, the entire box is only 20 bucks and we've gotten a lot out of it. It takes about an hour to play and each game is different than the last. Ooh, and look at the cards. Yeah, the art is really sweet, and check out that foiling on the back. Right now you can play with one or two people, but that's going up to four next year with an expansion. It's really perfect for a commander pod, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Nice, so why doesn't Jimmy just play coup de gras? What? Oh yeah, that's way better. Wait a minute, how did- Reading the card explains the card. <laughs> 
Order Kinfire Delve Vainglory's Grotto right now at kinfiredelve.com and use code COMMAND10 at checkout for 10% off. Again, that's kinfiredelve.com with code COMMAND10 or find it at your local game store starting November 21st. Kinfire Delve Vainglory's Grotto. It's a whole lot of game for just 20 bucks. And then I'm going to flash out Illusory Ambusher. I will bolt it to draw three cards. I will sneak attack out Triska Decafile. I'm going to go to my upkeep and I will win the game. <laughs> That was your first time playing the deck? Yeah. Well, I mean, first time in paper. I've already goldfished it like a hundred times on Architect. Their playtester is super user friendly. Playing cards just takes one click and you can mulligan, tutor, and move through your turns with the press of a key. There are simple menus with counters and copies and you can take notes on cards as you play them. Architect is the best place to browse, brew, and playtest commander decks. Just go to architect.com slash command zone to get started. That's A-R-C-H-I-D-E-K-T dot com slash command zone. It's time for round three Back and we're going to go in the same order. So it's me, Rachel, Josh, no, no, me, Josh, Rachel, yep, Rachel, we're going Josh, backwards, me. Yeah. yeah. So for my third pick, uh, we're back to the Colored Lands. And yeah, this pick number seven. This is, again, just like my green pick with Beseju. This is a card that goes in every single one of my blue decks. Uh-oh. Yeah. Dang it. Is m -m 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 Mystic Sanctuary. Dang it. Dang it. <laughs> you can't have it all, Josh. Uh, you can't have it all, Josh. Uh, it's a great one. So when it enters the battlefield untapped, unless you can uh, enters the battlefield tapped, unless you control three or more other islands. So that includes your steam vents and all that stuff. Uh, and then when it enters the battlefield, uh, if it's untapped, you can put an instant or sorcery from my graveyard on top of my library. This is just like win the game card sometimes. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Just oh, I need that expropriate again. I need I need that time warp. Whatever it is, I need that. Cyclonic Rift. Yeah. I get it back, and I'm in blue. I'm going to draw that card this turn as well. Yeah, there are loops with it, too. Yeah, so yeah I played Orvar. You played Orvar. Yep. It's a combo piece in yep. Orvar. Yep. Um, it's very if you can bounce good. it or copy it, yeah, it is. Just even with the bounce land, it's very good, right? Yeah. Play it, do bounce the thing, it. bounce it back to my hand, do that again. Yeah. That's backbreaking sometimes, so. Yeah. Oh, I had this at number five. Yeah. Nice. Uh, nope. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, and again. Uh, <laughs> what number did you have it at, Rachel? Uh, this is... Sort of vaguely six or yeah, seven. Yeah, it's like a five okay. for me too. There's a there's a couple that are like we all had it around the same spot then. Yeah, yeah it, it's close. certainly high. The power level is so real on that card where it's like Urza Saga where it doesn't go in every deck. It's one of the more narrow, powerful lands. Oh, I guess the it goes lands. in all my blue decks because I they all have instants I want to recur. But the lands that want it and the land like the decks more that, yeah. more blue decks that can support having four islands um are just absolutely starved for this land yeah. it's yeah. an incredible top deck i even find in my three color decks just because i have triomes now bounce yeah. i mean the the shock lands and like the the ha have lands i think or the yeah. ones mm -hmm. are like ones there are a lot of lands that say basic land type island on it there's definitely a lot more than there used to be it's a lot yeah. easier to turn yeah. on and the decks that have this as a land in the deck have some really important instants and sorceries so it's all yeah, yeah it's it's like skull clamp if it's in the deck it's very powerful it's really yeah. really yeah, yeah, good yeah, yeah. in the deck yep so that is my number three pick very good number three not very good. I wanted that. <laughs> yeah. John, you're going to get everything. Very bad. Well, I I don't know. There's a lot of cool blue blue lands left. Josh. Yeah, there are. There are. I am looking at one right now. Yeah, my six is... my 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 sixth and seventh pick are still open, and here I am at pick number eight. So I guess uh, I'm yeah. playing on house money, as they say. Mm -hmm. But I really am waffling between the two because. I definitely play one more than the other okay. because, but that's because it's colorless. Mm -hmm. Oh. I think I am going to do it. I am going to switch last minute here, which they say you shouldn't do in any draft, but here we go. Josh Lee Quiet with the seventh pick mm -hmm. in the 2023, blah, blah, blah. High market. High no market. Oh, I thought you'd take nice. out Awara. <laughs> there it is. High market. No. Ding, 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 ding. I, it's a good so one. I had high market so high on my list. <laughs> and, almost and fell to you. High like, market. I, I was like, I got to take Bajukovag over High Market. Yeah, I, I, I agree yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, it almost fell to you all the way at pick number no. nine. Yeah, but you know you get two in a row. So, yeah. So, High Market, tap, sacrifice, a stack a creature. Yep. Not it. Stack a creature, gain a life. It's, it's just, a sack outlet. Yeah, it's a sack outlet. It's a sack outlet you can play in every deck. There's, there's a lot of danger out there these days, too, with... Um, I don't know, things like Imprisoned in the Moon or yeah. Song of the Dryads, where they can kind of, there's more and more effects where they can kind of nab your commander forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I like having a sack outlet on board. There's just often things too where like they go to exile it. I'd rather have it in my graveyard. I have my high market untapped. So the, they go to Act of Treason of some kind, yeah. Insurrection yeah. even. Sometimes this can save you from those type of effects just enough. So just having a sack outlet that's 
cost your deck nothing yep. uh, yep. is yep. so powerful because there's just a lot of little moments where like, oh, if I sack it, one of the targets goes away, their spell fizzles. Like I've had that happen oh. with like uh, Profane Command and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, that's why I chose it. Yeah, I mean, High Market goes in so many more decks than you would think just because sack outlets are so incredibly powerful. It's another, It's like, it feels like Mesa Vith where if it's untapped, I feel like I'm protected from a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. It's hard um, for it to go too bad, right? Like yeah. worst case scenario, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can sack it. Yeah. And of course, if you if like, you know, you want stuff that dies, then it, it it's great. But in other decks is just so much additional utility. Um, the one thing I wanted to mention for high market is that I think in those decks the balances is so hard for like how many sack outlets versus how many token makers versus oh, how right. many payoffs uh, in like aristocrats or just dies decks in general. And high market allows you to like sneak an 11th sack outlet in there yep. without eating a spell slot and just makes those balances work a lot better. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Sag. All right. What is <laughs> your right. next pick, Rachel? Mm-hmm. You have two in a row here. So you get nine and 10. Yeah. Oyster. So this is, so yeah, for my third pick here is pick number nine pick number nine overall da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah i like how we write our list with numbers and then we and always change them once we, we get into yeah, yeah, yeah. Riff <laughs> here. so this room. is this is my third and my fourth pick which means i'll have one more pick after this yes. okay yeah um i think for number three i'm gonna take field of the dead Oh, no. yeah, my next um, okay. Field, Field of the Dead is, is one of my favorite cards to have in play. It's like such a fun win con and uh, it's a great incidental token maker. It, it does the similar thing to high market where you're yeah. like it, it it takes up a token maker slot that isn't isn't taking up a spell slot. Yep. Yeah, very good. Um, it's super free and busted. <laughs> yeah, and it's especially you're gonna yeah. have there's so many new non basic lands out there. You're gonna be able to trigger this, and it just keeps going. Yeah, I mean, so many of the lands that we're talking about are spells, like which is what what you yeah. really want your utility lands to feel like mm-hmm. is just a fully like a fully powerful spell. A lot of utility lands. I feel like are overcosted something yeah. Yeah. or are like a slightly worse version of that effect. But all of the lands that we're looking at and all of the ones that like feel the most powerful yeah. are worth a card and are also a land. Okay. What number did you have feel of the dead at, J- Jimmy? It was going to be my next pick. Wow. Yeah. Shockingly, I did not have it on my list. Oh, oh. you don't want to make creatures? I don't, I, like care. I don't care about creatures much. I, think, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anybody's noticed. This draft gets the most interesting when someone doesn't have a land on their list. Yeah. That to me says a lot. I'm I don't like, know why, honestly. When you said it, I was like, yeah. We're, and then I was like, wait, oh. Where wait, is I don't it? Have yeah. it. I remember <laughs> putting it on my, like I made a master of like 30. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. I bolded like 15 because we're not going to go past 15. And then I yeah. put a couple, you know, I went to 18 just in case I want to change some minds. I don't know why. I can't even think of a reason why I feel that that's not at least in my top 18. It's that good. feels like a mistake. Yeah. It feels like a mistake. <laughs> Yeah, it's a uh, it's a good one. All right, it's, Rachel. Yeah, this this up again. So we are in round four. This is pick number ten overall. Um, this is your man. second to last pick. This is my second to last. Yeah, pick, no which pressure. Is, which no is pressure, the really yeah. tricky thing because now we're getting to the point where it's like wasteland's still on the table. Yeah, like I could still take I could take wasteland at this spot. Yeah. But you know, I feel like you get it for free be, at the end yeah, of the draft. Yeah. You're going to get it for free at the end of the draft. <laughs> I don't know. Jimmy Ells is going to take it next. <laughs> I'm not going to take it next. Well, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm draft, not taking Wasteland. Yeah, okay. yeah, uh, yeah. He has a strip line. He's okay. And I can use Josh's strip line. We, he promised me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we share everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think I... I think I'm going to take my channel land. I'm going to take Ottawara. Ottawara. I'm not, gonna, I'm not just going to pass it, it right back to yeah, Chad. I'm it. not. I'm not going to do yep. it. That's the one I was thinking about at the high market slot. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, dang. I thought I was going to get it. <laughs> we've, I mean, we've talked about like how good these channel lands are and now they feel fully like spells. If you can reduce this down to two mana or three mana and just answer any artifact, creature, enchantment, or planeswalker yeah. and bounce it to their hand in a way they can't, interact with in a super easy way it's basically like i've seen i've seen auto war win games yep. in moments yeah. where you feel yeah, so it's... safe yep that you're just like oh no spells can be cast this turn good thing this is a spell yeah. channel yeah. they're holding they're holding their fierce guardianship and they're like wait what yeah what yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just like Masaju. yeah 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 uh, i love odawara 
Dang. dang it's so good. Yeah. Dang it. Yep. Uh, pretty it hits creatures too, whereas Boseju doesn't. So. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. get creatures. I Purpose believe. Eight. No, that's not. Uh, yeah. I Ottawa. It's awesome. I'm so excited what? to have it. I had it at number six. Uh, Jimmy, what did you have it at? It was deeper. I had it right at the same level of Takanuma for me. So it was actually like 10 or 11, I think. And you already got Boseju, which yeah, is. Yeah, I got Boseju. I figure. Mm. Yeah. I got one. All right, we're up to pick number 11. Is that me? Pick yeah, number 11, you. round four. Okay. Uh, ah, once again, there's two right <laughs> next to each other that I like both. I know, and I'm pretty sure if you don't take this one for it right now, I'm going to take it. So <laughs> There's two options for one, so I'm going to go with Academy Ruin. No! Uh, yeah, I figured. Yeah. It's so good. this is one I didn't have on my list. At all, huh? I didn't have Academy. I don't play a ton of artifact decks just mm. generally. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, so that may have something to do with it. But I've often had this kind of effect in play, and I just have never had a moment where I felt like yeah. activating it. Yeah. So this is, uh, it's a legendary land. You pay one in blue, tap it, put target artifact card from your graveyard on top of your library. And that is your fourth pick, Josh? Yeah, that is my number four and number 11 overall. Oh, this is very similar to Mystic Sanctuary. And in some yep. ways... I, depending on the player kind of player you are, I think it could be better. Yeah. Um, it often allows you to sort of loop the same thing over and over. And if you're doing like artifactocrats, like scrap trawler style stuff, usually there's card draw going on during that yeah. from triggers and things like that. And you can often like loop one of those things back around, grab it, put it back into play, keep the loop going. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can do any sort of un untapping, which you often can in artifact decks. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it definitely has combo potential like a lot of things, but I think also it's just a good value piece of like, hey, listen, I just want to get this really important artifact back out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just always, it's it's like you said with Maze of it a little bit, I always feel pretty safe when I have Academy Ruins out and I have my important pieces. It's like, you know, I, I'm going to be able, even if they kill the thing, the, yep. the important thing, I'll be able to keep going, keep my plan online, get it back. Yeah. Oh gosh, what do I do now? I have two picks in a row here, and there are so many options. There's like so these are your final two. These are my lands. final this two is lands. Rounding out your collection For the rest here. of your commander yeah. career. No, was, no other. Uh. Lands. I mean, other lands, Jimmy. Please, you I think I think I got to go with this one. I, I I was thinking about skipping it because high market's already been taken. I don't even know if other people have it on their list, but it is Phyrexian Tower. Oh, oh that's yeah, so it's a good. good one. So this is a sack outlet. Uh, you can add it to tap colorless, or you can tap it, sack a creature, and you add black, black. So aristocrats decks um, love this card. It basically is a soul ring in a lot of ways. Um, yeah. There have been so many times when I just have this out and go, oh, that thing I didn't think was possible is now possible mm -hmm. because I have a Frexian Tower out. Um, so I love this land. It goes in a lot of my decks. Um, and I, I, I mean, do you either of you even have it on your lists? I had it on my uh, list of backups where it was like, mm -hmm. I was really intending to take high market super high. So I was like, it is fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, Phyrexian Towers is a card I have never picked up is it's been 20 bucks for a long time. Yeah. And yeah. I've just run just high market in its spot. But for it is strictly better in mono black decks. Or, it, not, or in, not in black, black decks, decks. Yeah. Yeah. at all. If yeah. you have black at And all. not to mention, yeah, yeah, yeah like black. so many important black spells cost multiple black pips as yeah. well. So this can help filter mana for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is ramp. I mean, we're not, yeah. we're sort of disregarding mana stuff yeah. for this episode, but yeah. It's a sack outlet that is also ramp. Yeah, so the I sack think, outlet yeah. part of it is nice. Yeah, I think you mainly run it for the sack outlet part yeah, and right. the ramp is sort of the gravy part of the card. Yeah, it's so good. I don't, I did not have this on my list either. Uh, I don't know why. It easily could have gone on. Oh, yep. boy. But what do I do about my last card? So we're now to pick number 13. Oh, there's so is Jimmy's last pick in this many draft. choices. I know. I'm getting a little bit anxious about how many haven't been I crossed know, off my it's list. It's wild. Yeah. yeah. So the, we are on to round five of the draft. This is everybody's final final pick. Final pick the final land out. we're ever going to get in the, our entire yeah. commander careers. Oh we're making that gosh. decision right now. No pressure. Jimmy, what are you picking? Okay, part of me wants to say Vesuva because it's really funny because it's just any <laughs> land on the battlefield. But that's a little cheesy. All of them. All of them. So I'm going to pick a card that has a lot of replacements. So I don't think anyone's going to get upset by this. I'm going to pick Emergence Zone as oh, my last land emergence here. Emergence Zone. I yeah, like this pick. This is a card that I think lets you win the game on the spot as well. So you can tap it for color, so you can pay one and tap it to sack it, and you may cast spells this turn as though they had flash. Yeah. So this is basically end step. I'm going to tap this and do a bunch of things you had no idea. I can cast creatures, enchantments, planeswalkers, artifacts, whatever, at flash speed. There are a bunch of other options like this. The other one that Josh and I have used for a long time is Alchemist Refuge, but that's strictly green and blue. Mm. Yep. So I like Emergence Zone as the top of those flash-type cards. 
it's funny because this slot casting things at flash speed, although I didn't have emergence zone, um, was my sort of next, the one I was thinking about oh, really? instead of Academy Ruins. Yeah. Okay. Did you have emergence zone or anything similar? No, I, I had, I had none of these lands on my, on my lands. list at all. Yeah. Um, I had two other similar ones to emergence zone, but I think emergence zone is the best for me. Cause I like the, I don't care that you can't repeat it. Yeah. I just rather have it one time big, try to win the game on that spot. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think if I was going to pick one, that's the, like emergence zone is the one I would do because it's, it says like you can cast spells this turn. Yep. is basically what it is. So yep. if like, if something happens and everything goes off the rails, you can be like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to crack this. I'm going to try and win on top of this win. It gives you a big turn, but you do have to know about that. In that's, advance. that's what I yeah. found about emergence zone. That's tough. Is you tricky. can do it proactively knowing you're going to do it, but you can't be like, depending on what happens, I will use this, which yeah. is why I kind of like winding canyons or mm. alchemist refuge, because if you leave up emergence zone and all your mana, you have to go for it. Yeah. Cause otherwise you did nothing. But then when you do, you're sacrificing land, you're only doing it the one time. Mm. And I kind of like to have the threat of like, I might just drop a creature in and block what you think, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. you don't just have, free attacks on me or I might cast this spell out of my hand that's an instant also mm. but emergency makes that tough uh yeah. But I, yeah, these flash lines are hard to... It is about style, Jimmy, which I appreciate about your, like your analysis of it. But yeah, you're like an explosive blah player. Yeah. So, And even if it isn't win the game, it could just be, sure, I have other flash things to do that mm. aren't emergent zone based. Yeah, so if yeah. you have a very instant heavy deck, emergent yeah. zone gets way better. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, I agree. Um, okay. it's, it's interesting. I, it, I, I definitely... Uh, drew like was curious about both of you having those for sure is that it's been a while since i played this this kind of land <sighs> so i'm pick number 14 uh it uh, is yeah. my last pick mm-hmm. <laughs> i'm reading the whole i have like nine more lands listed and, and the, i like the, all, all of them, them. yep yeah uh, we'll have to talk about it, uh, an honorable mention yeah, or two yeah, we did, here. We did, we did a, a round of honor, okay, good, honorable good, mentions good. last time that i think we'll do it again a little better yeah uh I, <laughs> it's hard between Winding Canyon and Alchemist Refuge because, mm. like Jimmy said, one is very color restricted, but a lot better because it lets you cr- cast non creatures. So yeah, I am going to go with Alchemist Refuge. Okay. As, right. Which I don't think is probably correct because of the color restriction. Uh, probably a better pick is Winding Canyons, but I really do but like only to cast creatures sorceries and canyons. artifacts and enchantments at instant speed often is yeah. sort of backbreaking. Uh, but it does definitely mean that like over the course of the rest of my commander career, only a certain amount of decks will even be eligible to have this land in it. I do play a lot of like three, I don't like like dual and monocolored much, so yeah. I, I probably have a better chance, but still uh, that's the downside. But the upside is once I have Alchemist Refuge out, it feels a lot like Vidalcan Ori, and Vidalcan Ori is too slow these days, so I still get that feeling. I can still get that rush. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because the land doesn't feel like it costs you much. The rush. You just yeah, play that just land, and you're like, cool. Three mana to yeah. activate every time yeah. you activate yeah. it. Yeah, you have to have a lot of mana. <laughs> does that, It does cost yeah. you a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, if, if you have a deck that's creating a ton of mana or is doing like that Seaborn Muse yep, type yep. of thing, mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. really, really powerful. Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to recreate recreate the profit of Crufix for like for the rest yeah, of my command yeah, career. Yeah. That's all profit. I'm trying to do. I just want to see profit. Of Crufix. <laughs> yeah, I just want profit of Crufix. We miss you. Yep. <laughs> no, we don't. Write to us. How no, you doing? No, we don't. <laughs> Nobody actually wants this. The profit got drafted by. I do. It's yeah. like no. <laughs> it's like the paradox <laughs> engine unbanned. Nobody actually wants this. It's sad because it got drafted by a college and then they got banned from the NCAA or whatever. It's like, <laughs> they can't even play anymore, so they're just sitting in exile somewhere. <laughs> so sad <laughs> could have had an amazing career i know it did have an amazing career that's true too amazing could have gone short. down in history though oh, yeah Me on the history. hall of fame all right rachel you got pick number 15 the very last, the last pick. one oh no my pressure. god yeah i mean i'm looking at my list and these are just like it is just a pile of lands that i love to run here but i yep. think i <sighs> <laughs> picking between your children <laughs> yeah i mean it feels like i should pick wasteland but that's no, so boring no don't it's do so that boring. that is boring we could we'll Again, all play ghost quarters and we all get ghost time. quarters yeah we're good no uh, i'm not playing because i have strip mine yeah, yeah. you guys strip, <laughs> strip mine something else entirely uh you know what i'm gonna play the i'm gonna pick the mono red mystic sanctuary Oh. I'm taking Valakit. Valakit, wow. the molten This pinnacle. was not on either of your no. lists. No. Um, but I respect it. And I was like, maybe I'll have to fight Jimmy for it. 
But Valakit no. is the kind of land that if it's in play, people are like, uh oh. <laughs> You're gonna do something crazy with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Something it's bad like is happening. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it turns it turns your lands into a win con. If I'm playing like it's the first thing you search for with scape shift. Yeah. yeah, totally. And you're like, how do I hit my mountain drop? It's the first thing that you build like your mana base around is making sure that Valakit works. And it's the kind of land that makes me want to build around it. Even if the deck isn't necessarily a lands deck, it's oh. like, I'm going to put, okay. you know, I'm going to play more mountains if I, to get it in there. If I'm, if I'm playing like, you know, usually gruel yeah. or mono red or even like, yeah even blue red like I th it's in dragon's approach i think um because when it is when it is online it's incredible it's very powerful yeah, it feels wins really the game yeah i mean it makes sense too because you like monocolor decks you like dual color decks yeah yeah, yeah. falcat's never a thing for me because i can't fit it in the three color plus seven decks. mountains <laughs> yeah. who has those yeah, exactly yeah red's not I will the highest never have color that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i like the mono white one too i was like can i put it on my list and they're like no it is not even close to the top <laughs> <laughs> i like that falcon made it on there i feel like we all had a couple of weirdo picks as you like to yeah, call them rachel yeah. yeah it feels like the last pick was the slot where we're like well i'll splurge a little here yeah, 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 I'll do something fun. Yeah. A little yeah. spendy. <laughs> um, there are a ton of really, really sweet lands that didn't make the list. Um, so before... Yeah, let's oh. list our next like our yeah. next two or, sure, or so. Sure. Yeah, you... so let yeah let's do the last time we did the land the, or the uh, equipment that we wish we had or the one that like you look at your list and you miss it the most. Oh, already, okay. Considering yeah. that we will never play any of these lands again. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, I'll go with one of them. I guess we'll name a couple because I, I really want to talk about a couple. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is Urborg to yeah. Magma. Yeah, that's, that mine. that's mine. The moment you play any black deck, Urborg just does incredible things with your Cabal Coffers and all yeah. those cards. So. So, and but, just, you know, your black spells are easy to cast for yeah, the rest of the everything's game, Everything's right? easy to cast, yeah. yeah. It's like a chromatic lantern in black decks. That's yeah. what it feels like. And not just like that, you, feel fixed. you get to play other lands that make yeah, your I don't like that comparison. Nuts. <laughs> so <laughs> This good. one's free, and yeah. the other one costs three. I disagree <laughs> with that comparison, I've I never, see what you're saying. I very rarely had Urborg be <laughs> a downside. It's emotional effect. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> As a chromatic lantern. <laughs> I think it was hard to properly rate Urborg, yeah. because separating it from Cabal Coffers in your brain is like, well, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? Yeah. yeah, do I have Cabal Coffers? If I don't, <laughs> Urborg's still good, but it's not, it feels less good. Yeah. yeah, it probably belongs a lot higher on all our lists, but but because of that calculation was hard to make. Yeah, yeah, it's tough to separate it from Cabal Coffers. It does have a lot, so like some utility outside of that. Yeah. Obviously, like Filth is a really great, good way to give everything Swamp Walk. Now all your stuff isn't blockable. I think an interesting thing about Urborg is we slam it into every deck that is black. Like yeah. I play yeah. as many Urborgs as I can, basically. Yeah. 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 But it does fix your opponents yeah, a lot. If you have one black opponent, like that's playing, oh yeah, that's yeah, playing yeah. two colors, or even has, they're just they're like, oh, thank goodness, it turns fetch land. Thank yeah. you. Well, they're like, sweet. Now I can tutor yeah. for my cabal coffers. Exactly. Yeah, you, got, yeah. you played me the other there piece. There is a downside to Ur to Urborg yeah. that is uh, not often put into. Uh, I don't see it happen that often, to be honest, but I, it is definitely, yeah. if it is happening, you're like, darn it. <laughs> what, what number did you have it at, Rachel? Um, I had it, so there's strip mines on my list, and it sort of made my numbers weird, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine... Uh, 13? I had it exactly 13 as well. I'm 13? at, I think, 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Nope, I had it like at 13 or 14. Oh, we all had it yeah. in the same place. There's well, a lot of mine's redundant. a little weird because, yeah, like, yeah I had like yeah, Academy Runes the... and Baird Runes next to each other because yeah. I was like, if I don't get one, maybe I want the other. Mm. Um, what and, was your other land, Jimmy? Oh, gosh, this one's tough. So I, I think it's a toss-up between Reliquary Tower and Yavamaya Hollow. Uh, yeah, I'd hollow yeah, as my next. Yeah, my oh, hollow, really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hollow was like just out of reach for all of us. I yeah, think, yeah. Because it's my 14th pack. A lot of times I just don't care about regenerating a creature. Uh -huh. um, but when it's useful, it's amazing. Um, but yeah, Reliquary Tower, I think, would be the next. Just it's one of those cards that when you gr draw it from drawing so many cards, you're like, ha ha, I win. <laughs> Reliquary Tower, don't have to discard <laughs> anymore. <laughs> I never play Reliquary Tower. Ah, yeah. you're not drawing enough cards. <laughs> I, I have less and less of it. I draw a lot of cards, but I'm usually happy with the top seven, and, or yeah. hopefully yeah. I get a Thoughts Vessel or something. But uh, yeah, I found Reliquary to be... Uh, I'd rather have other utility lands, I yeah. think, and there's only so many slots. That's a tough... It's a tough slot for me. I, do, I would just rather put in another, like a Ghost Quarter or a second Demolition Field or something yeah. like... Yeah. A, you know, more and more Demolition yeah. Fields. I run like four or five Demolition yeah. Fields in each of my decks. Totally days. fair, not yeah. cheating at all. Nope. You gotta have answers for lands. <laughs> 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 I had Yavamaya Hollow at my next pick after. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's was, a great card. 
Yeah, that's very underrated. I know it's a little bit expensive. I think it might be reserve list or something, but yeah, yeah. yeah. But it is just a way to protect not just your commander, but any creature. Yeah. Mm. And it's annoying as heck when your opponent has one and you're like, you have a green untapped? Yeah. Okay. Okay, don't. Uh, yeah, it's almost like a maze of death. Yeah. Where you're like, I can't really attack you with that. Like, yeah. you're just chomping it. I can't even go after, like, trying to remove your commander and stop what yeah. is shenanigans you got going on because yeah, yeah. you're smart and you left up protection for it. Yeah, yep. and Core Haven is like the, the white maze of death version yeah. of that. Yeah, that, it's, it, fogs it fogs one creature. One yeah. Yeah, creature, yeah. yeah. Costs uh, one and a white, one, though. Yeah, yeah it's, too much. it's like, it's like three, three to activate. <laughs> it's tough. What um, was on next up on your list as an honorable mention, Rachel? Um... Iganjo was the highest one mm. that I was going to take the cycling Iganjo. That's the white um, side. Yeah. Land. It deals four damage to uh, attacking or blocking creature. Uh, um, I got wrecked by it in the game. Yeah. That's Bernard deck. Yeah. It's a little underrated on the channel lands. I, I think Iganjo is, is. Oh, it's great. So, so strong, but like all of them are kind of strong and it felt a little silly to take, take another one. Um, so my hot take, this is my hot take is, uh, Moss Warp Bridge was my number 12. Oh, wow. Oh, not even um, on my list. I think commander players got really used to this just showing up in casual places a lot and are underrate how powerful it is. It can actually be, To yeah. look at the top four, pick a spell, and cast it for free at instant speed in a way that, like, is protected from wheels, is protected from, like, and nobody's blowing up your Moss Warp Bridge. Right, yeah. You know? So I, I think these lands... The green one and the red one are the sort of the only playable ones in Commander for the most part. The white one's okay, but is worth it coming in tapped. And honestly, it came from watching more and more Vintage Cube content and watching Shell Dock Isle just be incredible. Yeah. And you look at Moss War Bridge again and you're like, yeah, if I have like three creatures, I can cast a spell for free off the top of my library. That's yeah. pretty crazy. That's yeah. busted yeah. at instant speed. Um, so I think Moss War Bridge is one of those things that like, you have to like re-examine as a commander yeah. player because we're so familiar with it. I've had Crater Hoofs come off that thing, so. Yeah. <laughs> it definitely has won the game for people. Yeah. Um, mine, Ink Moth Nexus was oh, pretty man. high on wow. mine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As a sort of con. sneaky win con. Yep. Yep. Often... It's crazy how when that's on the battlefield, you often have to calculate it into all your moves because you're like, okay, I'm going to do this, this, and this, and then wait. But what about that? Yeah, what do I do if they do something crazy with that ink moth? And you're like, and often the answer is, oh, I'm going to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Then you have to like totally change what you're going to do so you don't die because you don't know. Why do they have it in their deck? They're going to do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not going to be hit you for one. (laughs) (laughs) It's not there to do that. (laughs) So you're like, crap, I don't know. And somewhere around seven mana, six mana, it's like, I might die if if I just close my eyes or if I blink for a second. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to point out that one of the highest sort of played utility lands, it's top three, I think, mm. on like EDH Rec that none of us have anywhere on our list is Rogue's Passage. Rogue's Passage, yeah. Nobody it's mentioned it. The very last pick for me. Uh, yeah. Which I, I don't have on my list either because I cannot actually remember the last time I activated Rogue's Pac- Passage. It's been like five plus years. Yeah, you've it's already, just, yeah. It's just impossible to do. It's five mana, basically. Yeah. Um, Usually but, when you activate it, you win the game. But if but, I haven't done it in five years, then it's probably not... That situation's not coming up yeah, very often. Yeah. 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 Uh, but I do like Shizo Death Storehouse. That card oh, Giving it fear? Yeah, because it also is a land that sneakily does not come into play tapped. And yeah. so that's a card where you can kind of get them a lot more than Rogue's Passage because you hold it in your hand knowing that like, oh, I'm going to get this person out of nowhere. They think they can block or they're not worried about this mm. one thing. And I go, play it, right. activate it, attack you. And I've had good success with that. I've probably knocked out well i definitely have knocked out more players in the last five years with shizo with than shizo, i have yeah. with yeah. rogue's passage so yeah that would be my message out there if you haven't played with shizo i'd give it a shot it's going to be better than rogue's passage almost every time yeah. of course sometimes yeah. they have black creatures and it's yeah. tough but sometimes they tap them and because they, they don't know and again yeah. play it like that i would say you don't drop it unless you need the mana yeah, yeah but yeah. you hold it until the last minute you can so they don't know about it it also cool. caught a reprint recently so it's a lot cheaper than it used to be yeah um one that n- we all sort of flirted with, but didn't, oh, didn't but actually nobody add. mentioned that I want to talk about is uh, Glacial Castle. Yeah. Yeah. It feels um, too mean to pick. That's it. That's it. <laughs> and that's high, the thing but... is, is we all looked at it and we're like, eh. Yeah, but. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> but it's so good. But yeah. <laughs> but ugh. So it's got cumulative upkeep. If you pay two life, then four, then six, then eight. But when you play it, you have to cycle in and you cannot attack and all damage dealt to you is reduced to zero. And the reason I don't play it is clear because it says you can't attack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Poor Jimmy had to play against this card a lot earlier. Oh, in the early days. Because I was, I was so like, this card's unbeatable. I played it and everything until I learned like, oh, this is a little mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, it's, and it forces you to be able to play a very specific type of win con too, right? I never attack for the win, so it never matters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, attack. Yeah, I'm like, oh, oh this means damage. I can't die? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Neat. I love it. <laughs> yeah, every time I played against Glacial Chasm, I'm just like, ugh, I forgot that people still run that. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Powerful. <laughs> if you listen to like our first like, maybe 50, 60 episodes, I yeah. probably mentioned this and uh, Constant Mists a lot. Oh, Constant yeah. Mists, yeah. Those yeah, are two yeah, cards yeah. I don't play anymore because uh, it feels bad. A lot of people, they've just come to the table with a deck that cannot beat those two cards. Right. And so I started taking them out because it doesn't feel good for anybody in that game. Yeah. yeah. But they are undoubtedly extremely powerful because many people come to the table and cannot beat those cards. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. why Strip Mine's so good, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, all right. Before we go, I want to I want to walk through all all of our picks okay. in order again, okay. and then just tell me what you think. All right. So uh, I picked both Seiju who endures is my first, and Command Beacon was my second pick. Mystic Sanctuary was my third pick. Phyrexian Tower is my fourth pick, and Emergent Zone was my fifth pick. All right. My first pick was Urza Saga. Then I got Strip Mine. Ooh. Then High Market. Then Academy Ruins, and then Alchemist's Refuge. Yeah. My first pick was Maze of Ith. My second one was Bajukabog. My third pick is Field of the Dead. My fourth pick is Written Small. Oluwara. It's Ottawara, yeah. Soaring City. And my fifth pick was Valakut, the Molten Pinnacle. Wowee. I love how spicy we all got on the fifth round. It's yeah, pretty yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, we it's all like, spiced ah, it up. I got some extra here. I, can I spice yeah. it up in the second round, apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, All right, man. well, let us know uh, in the comments uh, who you think won this draft. And, of course, also let us know what draft you think we should do next. Yes. Yeah, hit us with that. Uh, we're going to have our patrons vote, but we will absolutely take suggestions and throw it into those votes. If you want to vote, if you want to be a part of that conversation, become a patron. Uh, we're having some fun conversations around these lands. And let us know what's your first pick. Did we yeah. not talk about the utility land that you're like, oh, uh, uh, where's, excuse me. where's, 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 where's Inventors Fair, you guys? Oh, yeah. yeah. Where's Westville Abbey? Yeah. Black Hall Zone. of the Bandit Lord. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Uh, Cavern of Souls. Minamo Let, School at oh, Water's wait, Cavern of Souls does count right cavern of souls has utility outside of tapping for mana it's pretty good uh none of us had original was yeah. yeah i used to run that a lot it's not yeah, so good OG anymore though. yeah 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 <laughs> let us know if there's any lands that you guys would have snapped up and that we didn't grab we talked about a lot of really really sweet cards today we i was, did. it was like utility lands was a really fun conversation and you can pick up all of those lands over at cardkingdom.com slash command among many other magic cards uh, the cool thing about lands like this is many of the things that we talked about are colorless and very powerful and can go in a lot of decks. Yeah. So if you're looking to invest in something, you can go to Card Kingdom, you can find exactly the printing that you really like, and that's the kind of card that can go in any deck long term. So I love shopping at Card Kingdom because if I'm going to invest in something that I really care about, I want to make sure that I'm getting exactly what I want and it's showing up in the condition that I ordered it in. It's not crammed into some envelope and taped between cardboard and <laughs> I hope the mail <laughs> man treated it nicely too yes uh we trust Card Kingdom because they're professional about how they ship cards because they know cards. Uh, so again support the show and pick up some sweet magic cards over at cardkingdom.com slash command. And once you get those cards, you want to protect them. You want to make sure that they don't get dinged up or nothing happens to them. Ultra Pro is the game accessories brand that we trust our own collections to here at the Command Zone. Just go to ultrapro.com slash command. They have all kinds of cool deals on their website all the time. You can find secret layer drops of stuff or limited edition stuff, but also they have discounts all the time on major products. So, yeah, if, yeah sometimes you go there and you just get 40% off of a binders or something, and yeah. you're like, yeah, I'll just buy three of those right now because I need those uh, eventually. But they also just make really good sleeves and playmats and deck boxes dice, everything you need to make your battlefield look awesome and to give you all the game pieces that you need. So again, ultrapro.com slash command. All right. And a big thanks to our entire team here at the Command Zone. We got Damon Lenz, Eric Lem, Megan Yip, Garav Galati, Jordan Pridgen, Jamie Block, Arthur Meadowcroft, Manson Lung, Josh Murphy, Jake Boss, Sam Wallow, Evan Limberg, Katie Cullen, Mitch, Trevor. And thank you to see you for watching. Hope thank you're you. enjoying these draft episodes <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Peace.
For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs>